What is up everyone, welcome to how to draw the torso. Make sure to head over to the website and grab the free worksheet. The link will be in the description. If you're working traditionally, print it out. And if you're working digitally, bring this document into whatever software you are using. So for the torso, we're gonna go through five stages of practice and each stage will have a page. After you complete each stage, make sure to practice a little bit in your sketchbook. That way you'll retain the information better. On the first page, we're starting with a box for the rib cage. So this will be this will become a guideline for the organic form. We're starting with boxes because that will give us better guidelines for drawing the torso at any angle. So copy from the examples on the left side, you'll notice that this box is wider across the front, thinner towards the sides, and it's fairly tall, right? So these are the basic dimensions of the rib cage. So make sure that you capture the proportions properly on the right side. As you copy from these examples, pay attention to how you can get a sense of which angle we're looking at the ribcage from. So the first two, you can see that we're looking from top down view. You can see the top plane of these boxes while the bottom example on the left side, you're looking kind of upwards. That's why you can see the bottom plane. This is why using a box is so useful because it gives us a lot of information while keeping it very simple. Once you've completed this page, make sure to take some time to draw some of these boxes in your sketchbook. Try to capture very similar proportions where it's a tall box that's thin across the side, wide across the front. And then once you've done that and you've gotten comfortable with this box, move on to the next page. On page two, we're going to use the boxes that we drew in the last step and we're going to use that as a guideline to draw the more organic form of the rib cage. This will make it much easier to capture the roundness of the ribcage while still keeping the dimensions. Drawing the ribcage can be quite tricky because it's a very complex form to get used to. But if we think of the, the ribcage as a backpack that's slightly rounded but still has some of that box-like shape, it will make it much easier, right? So copy from the examples, take your time. This is kind of challenging, so make sure to use an eraser try to copy as best as you can. I've given you the guidelines for this page, but when you draw these in your sketchbook, you'll have to draw the guidelines yourself. Make sure that you take the time to practice that. There is no shortcut for learning this, so you'll basically just have to copy and draw this many times over until you get more comfortable with it. I've drawn a more box-like rib cage. You can use a more rounded egg shape, but I've found that using this more box-like shape makes it much easier to transition into more organic form. So use this method first and then you can try to use a more rounded shape if you want to. But I found that this was much easier for me to learn this way than using the egg shape. Once you're done this page, try to draw some of these rib cages in your sketchbook and see if you can capture that organic form while still keeping the dimensions. Once you've done that and you've gotten slightly comfortable with it, then move on to the next page. This is going to take a lot of practice, so take, it's to take some time. This is not, not an easy thing to learn. On the third page, we're adding in the box for the hips. So we're drawing the rib cage box again, but now we're adding a shorter, much smaller box beneath it. And this is where the hips will go. Make sure to leave a gap for where the stomach area goes. The stomach doesn't have a specific structure. So that's why we don't use any box or anything to draw the stomach. We'll just fill that space in later in the last step but make sure to leave a little bit of space so that you can draw that in later. Cut from the examples. Make sure to practice this step in your sketchbook many times over because using these guidelines will make everything else easier. So once you're comfortable with these boxes, drawing in the hips and the ribcage and everything will be much, much easier. I'm sure that in, on the last page, you notice how much easier it is to draw the ribcage in once you have the guidelines. So make sure to you take your time, practice these boxes. This is the probably the most important step. I, I would say this is the most important step because it's the one that takes the longest to understand. Copy from the examples, draw some of these torsos in your sketchbook. And then once you're done that, let's move on to the next page. On page four, we're adding in the shape of the hips and the shape of the hips is made up of this triangular shape. It looks almost like a pair of underwear. I like using this method because I found it much easier to add in the legs once we start moving on to drawing the full figure. Copy from the examples, just like the last steps. Practice it in your sketch. Practice this in your sketchbook. <laughs> Repetition is key to learning how to draw anything. That's why we're repeating a lot of the same shapes. We're, we've, you've drawn these rib cages before, but we're drawing it again. Doing this over and over again will make it much easier to memorize each step. So this is a lot of good practice, and doing this 
over and over again in your sketchbook will make it much easier to retain the information. As you draw in these organic forms, make sure to pay attention to the center line on each of these boxes and each of these forms. This will help us with the next step in the process when we add in the stomach. So pay attention to that right now. It will make it much easier to add the stomach in because you'll see how this line extends. Come from these examples. Once you're done that, draw some in your sketchbook and then move on to the final page. On to page five, the final page, the final step in this process. At the top, you can see how I've drawn in how you can move from the box guidelines to the organic forms and then we're adding in the stomach. And when you draw in the stomach, what you do is you extend the center line towards the middle where the belly button comes in and then it extends out again towards the bottom of the hips, right? So if you come from these examples, I've given you all the guidelines here so you can just focus on the stomach because you'll see how the center line goes in towards the belly button and it comes out again. So if you look at the top left example, the one from the ones you should copy, you can see how it comes in towards the right slightly when it hits the belly button and then comes back out again towards the left. So make sure to try to capture this organic form. For the sides of the stomach, you're basically just connecting the outer sides of the rib cage to the outer sides of the hips. Make sure to try to capture these organic lines. You can see how I've curved them inwards and how they kind of pinch towards the inside and then come back out and this gives you more organic feeling. Obviously, if you're drawing someone with a fuller figure, this would round more outwards, but cut from these examples first and then you can experiment with different shapes in your sketchbook after. And that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully this was useful to you. If you like this, make sure to head over to the website and sign up for the mailing list. That's the best way for us to stay in touch. And I have tons more tutorials on the site, free workshops and stuff. You don't have to sign up for the mailing list if you don't want to, but just go check out all the free content over there and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.